Now then, before the break, I spoke to the Romanian Foreign Minister, Titus Corlatan. He told me it's fundamentally wrong for the United Kingdom to fear huge numbers of Romanian workers coming here when restrictions are relaxed next year. Well, I'm joined now by a man who's been warning about all that for a long time now, the leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage. Very good to see you, Mr Thank Farage. You. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you heard what Titus Corlatan I did. Ha had to say there. And he yeah. said, well, you know, I mean, like it or not, you know, we are in the European Union and as many Britons are free to go to Romania as, oh, as really? want to go there. And they're, yeah, well, and they're free to come back, aren't they? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, I don't really think that... No, but I mean, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, no, because when the European community was countries like Germany and the Netherlands and us, you know, we could go and work there, they could come and work here. What none of us ever did was move around countries for welfare benefits. Now, what we're dealing with, with Romania and Bulgaria, are countries where, well, in the case of Bulgaria, nearly half the population is living below the poverty line. There is an obvious attraction for those people to come to this country to try and get jobs, but if they can't get jobs, they've now got the safety net of job seekers' allowance, housing support, um, health service, education for their children. But Mr. Corlatan feels that, you know, on that, the people like you have been stigmatising them, that they're no worse than any other nation. And he said he's had bilateral discussions, discussions with the UK, senior UK government representatives, and he's been assured that Directive 38, you'll know what that's all about, yeah. Directive 38 will be implemented and they will have all the rights that they would expect well, well, as EU citizens. Well, well, he's right. I mean, look, there's one regard in which he's right, and that is this. We are signed up to the European Union, and all the while we're members of it, there is nothing we can do to control the number of people that come here from any other European country and their immediate entitlement to the entire social security system of this country. Now, I'm not against Romania or Romanians, but I do think the point has come, with youth unemployment at 22%, for us to say, enough's enough, let's have a controlled migration policy into Britain, not an open door. And, and Mr Cameron's problem is that, that there's nothing he can do about this. He's completely impotent to deal with this issue. There is one simple answer, though. OK. Let's have a referendum. All right. But let's that, sort it we, out. We, even, if we, even if we got that in trend, do you think we could have it before 2014 and, and, and stop well, we Romanians and Bulgarians coming? We could organise a referendum for this autumn without any difficulty at all. OK, and that's your solution, then, is it? What about restricting benefits, restricting access to... We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. You know, we have signed up to the rules of a club, and Cameron goes on pretending that somehow we're going to restrict benefits to Romanians and Bulgarians. We are not. The European Commission and the European Court will make sure that we don't. OK, so that's a message I know resonated on uh, many of the doorsteps in Eastleigh. I, yes. I heard it articulated myself. Do you think it's long before you get the next, the first UKIP MP? And could it be you? Well, we came damn close on Thursday. Yeah. We really did. And well, a lot of people saying if you stood, it would have been you. Well, I, you know, listen, we had a superb candidate in Diane James. There is no evidence to suggest that I would have got any more votes than her. Uh, what was remarkable was it was a very short by-election, three weeks from start to finish. Um, and for us to get a surge of that size in such a short, short space of time shows uh, that people are resonating with what we're saying. Some today have written it off, oh, it's just a protest vote. No, it isn't. It's a rejection of three political parties who've all become social democrats and who don't even want to talk about issues like Romania and Bulgaria. OK, but they do want to talk about then what happens is they want you to flesh out your, yes. your offering, the UKIP offering. I mean, I was talking to, to a guy who said I was thinking of voting UKIP, but I had a look on, on the website and I couldn't really quite understand what, what UKIP is about. I mean, just to paraphrase what he said to me, he said, right, so you're going to get rid of the smoking ban, bring in a 31p universal tax rate, so abolish the 40 and 50p rate, so everyone's on 31 pence. You're going to build loads and loads of nuclear power stations and you're going to double the prison population. Well, um, in terms of energy, you're quite right. We're going to stop building wind turbines everywhere. Yeah, but loads, which will loads automatically, of nuclear power stations. Which will automatically cut everybody's electricity bill because we're all paying a 12% surcharge okay. to, to, to finance this rubbish. We want Britain to be self-sufficient in energy. So we will need nuclear power stations, but there's a shorter term problem than that. Next year, our six biggest coal-fired power stations are going to be closed mm. down because of an EU directive. And what we're saying is that meeting this god of carbon emission targets is damaging British business. OK, 31, British. Uh, just moving on, then, 31 pence tax rate universally over £11,500. No tax on minimum wage. The abolition of national insurance and, 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 and the simplifying of the system so that we don't pay tax and national insurance, we just pay one rate. So billionaires pay 31 pence? Uh, they would pay a bit more. They'd pay 40. But, but what we mustn't do is head down this current route where we're talking about people who are successful as somehow being wicked and bad. I fear a return to the 1970s. You've just had a debate that mm. the European Union wants to limit 
the bonuses that people in financial services earn. They're all called bankers mm. these days, but actually it's insurance people. I mean, these flat people. taxes... There is a real worry yeah. about this. We have got the most complicated tax system in the world. Yeah, so you're simplifying it, but these flat Absolutely. taxes then apply across the board, don't they? So they would apply to things like richer pensioners' benefits, they'd be taxed. Yeah. Pension funds, uh, there's no tax relief on pensions under a flat tax, is there? No, there isn't. There isn't. There isn't. I mean, I mean you know, and that's the stuff that we've got to sort out. But the aim is simplification. Do you know, when Gordon Brown became Chancellor, the British tax code mm. was 5,000 pages long. It's now 13,000. But you know, a lot of people long. who voted for you in Eastley are going to be surprised hearing that from you, Nigel Farage. They're going to be saying, well, I, a didn't, lot know, of people I in didn't know he was going to tax my pension contribution. Hang on a second. A lot of people in Eastley know that we're the one party that said for years no tax on the minimum wage to mm. give people incentives to get off benefits yeah. and to get back to work. And well, if, hold on, and if you're a low-paid teacher or nurse, you're going to tax their pension benefits. Well, I mean, look, that is detail. We've got to sort out and work out. But, but that's what people want to know now. Well, I can't give them, I can't give them a full manifesto for the next general election. Nor can David Miliband, nor can David Cameron. But what you can see with us is the direction of travel, and that is no tax for those. Earning, earning down at the very bottom, and a mass simplification okay. for everybody else. Uh, and get rid of the smoking ban. Well, I mean, when you see up to 50 <laughs> pubs a week closing, every pub should be able to have a back room that is a smoking room, and a lot more of them would stay open. So that might be a popular one. OK, thank you very <laughs> thank much you. indeed, especially with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd right the leader of UK.